Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Legendary Iron Man Exquisite Timing Run. My name is Saiken. Uh, this also includes permanent dark events, by the way. My name is Saiken. We're trying to beat the game in a speed run in only four months, uh, which is something that usually has been achieved on Commander difficulty, and already there it's quite difficult. We're trying to do it on Legendary difficulty. After I um, uh, recorded a kick ass intro, Unfortunately, OBS decided to just shut down, so we are starting at the beginning of the mission instead of on the Geoscape. It is what it is, though. Let's take some time uh, to get to know our soldiers. By the way, short info um, regarding uh, the character pool. I now do have an understanding why our characters haven't been drawn from the character pool. Fortunately, parts of the character pool had been disabled and only the newest editions had been enabled, which is the uh, whole explanation why we're having just a part of the crew and a lot of rookies. It's not the end of the world. Um, uh, normally, I like to play with the standard characters and, of course, the ones that uh, you have uh, submitted. But this time it is rookie time or new characters time. We're eventually going to get some more from the character pool. Anyways, we got Pablo here as the Grenadier. Uh, we got uh, a no-name uh, sniper called Mabazo. I gave a kind of a voodoo-ish uh, look. We got uh, Jessica Jones, aka Rabbit here, who's one of our viewer characters. And we got Wrath, who's probably going to be the MVP of this run. We uh, need to rescue, okay, well, before I start the action, we need to rescue uh, the VIP over here. The problem with that is it's a moderately difficult mission, meaning that we're very likely to probably uh, fight against 10, uh, maybe even 12 enemies, and then the rescue takes place, and we will need to uh, withstand multiple rounds of reinforcements coming in. Um, I spotted a remote start and a huge one on top of that, which means let's maybe see if we can hide somewhere here and lure a pack of enemies into that position. If we would be able to do that, it would be absolute fantastic because we already know how strong remote start is. Commander, remember, no matter how tough things get down here, we can't evac until we complete the mission. All right, so it seems that the pack has not moved at all. Instead, we're getting a second pack. Hmm. Yeah, we can't just get there, open the door. That would not be feasible. Nor would it work, because we would be trapped. All right, moving over. Sniper takes a position over here. The idea is really to lure any of the enemies into the direction here. And we also got to make sure that we're not killing the Advent Officer. I go where you tell me. Opening the door. So that we can see them better. I will reposition. Perfect. The other pack is uh, homing in. Normally, if you're not moving for a longer period of time, that's exactly what's going to happen. Advent is going to come to your position and miraculously spots you out. What really happens is uh, the AI is trained to essentially always move between you and the target and if uh, that is not possible they will come closer and closer they are like bloodhounds 
and they won't accept no for an answer. Nice. Only problem could be the advent, um, the advent officer, but that's two dead stun lancers and a sectoid. I think I'll do that. So easily set the flame. Plus, we're not even going to lose cover, uh, concealment rather. Cool. They did not move at all. And I don't yet want to trigger them. Instead, let's wait and see what they are going to do. They heard the explosion, but they decided to instead do nothing. Well, I can agree with that. How about, though, we are... Hmm. I mean, one of the things that we could do is use our claymore and just kill everyone short of the officer. It would mean we would have used a lot of our explosives, but I think it's worth it because we definitely want to score check the officer. And afterwards, the codex will appear. So getting rid of those two without killing the officer. Is very helpful. Good. So two down. Now the officer kind of charges into cover, which is fine. Won't help him much though. We're now spotted out. And that is fine as well. Yeah, we didn't get the intel, but that's fine. Okay, so Codex is coming in. Okay, I don't want to waste the flashbang grenade yet. And I'm wondering, I mean, we do have two actions left over. If we were to go closer to the Codex, first and foremost, it's a good idea to simply spread out because the Codex will teleport and will use its um, psionic bomb. If we're just dealing damage to it, minimum four, and then we would need to deal with two codices. Probably not the right answer. I think instead what we can do I mean we could overwatch wouldn't do much. We can use uh, the grenade which I didn't want to use yet. So we're just overwatching for now, it will teleport, sounding bomb, like it always does. Yeah, it struck two of our um, two of our operatives. can continue using the psionic bomb, which is a bit of a shame. Do we have an option to maybe get a flank? Yeah, that, that here is an option. My life is in your hands. We might lose our concealment. But that would be a finishing um, a finishing touch for the codex and on the same on the same account we could go to here. That's a pretty well covered position. Light cover into two directions. 
Unfortunately, just limit the damage with our slashing. Still maximum damage. Uh, it clones. Clone gets into a decent position for us. This here should kill the Codex. Mm. Worst potential outcome, unfortunately, 90% shot that missed. Which forces us to do a backup plan. We're going to use one of our grenades. That deals at least three points of damage, so even if it doesn't kill the Codex, uh, there won't be a clone. Luckily for us, it did maximum damage. So that's one clone down. A low chance to hit, uh, hit and kill uh, this Codex over here, and if we're not successful, we just gotta deal with it. Yep, gotta deal with that. So we're probably going to take one shot. Luckily for us, Codex decided to miss. And how about we're reloading and just finishing the Codex? I think that would be a good idea. Full cover. Oh, worst possible outcome. Minimum damage and a clone. Yeah, we could go to here and use a grenade as kind of a finisher. I don't want to deal with the codex any longer, so... We might need to spend some resources in order to fully get rid of it. In hindsight, probably not the right decision to not engage it with a flashbang. We instead lost a few grenades, quite a few grenades. Okay, we could finish that codex and Moving to here, we can finish the other one. Don't want to get another shot from the Codex. So we're probably even going to lose Concealment. Yeah, that was far from optimal. I took a gamble and it didn't pay out. Not the end of the world. We're still having a f uh, the Flashbang Grenade. And it probably would have been more efficient to simply use the Flashbang and just kill it. But that's hindsight 2020. Could have been just the other way around, uh, which means if we would have engaged it uh, from the get uh, from the get go, as it had six hit points, you know, it had actually only five hit points. It could have been a solid kill. It could have been reduced to one hit point, in which case I would have killed it. Of course, it was minimum damage and a miss from our sniper. Which just made the situation a bit worse. Um, yeah, we're going to go into Shadow and the Shadows again. And let's take a look here. We don't want to approach the VIP too fast. I noticed that uh, the turn is almost instantaneous, telling me that there are no further enemies. Nope, there aren't. Now, let's talk about how we want to position here. Once we approach the VIP, there are going to be spawn locations somewhere here. And the exit is also pretty random. What you generally want to do is you want to be in a position uh, that offers great cover for you, such as the high ground here, and that has a lot of doors and other means to just block line of sight. So I think what we're going to do 
is what are we just going to basically move up here and we're going to take our defense like right up there maybe with the exception of wrath like I said don't want to get too close to the VIP yet still need to make my decision where and how to position we definitely want the sniper up there perfect position for the sniper would be here that allows us to kind of get everything down here and with an open door sort of everything up here Getting it done. since the sniper is going to be the most stationary uh, target Pablo on the other hand we can put Pablo here that would give us a lot of agency as well working with the guys downstairs as well as being able to jump down as well as being able to help over here in terms of our Reaper um, how about taking a position over here And finally, Rabbit. For now, up here. But we're probably going to move her down. All right. So. Let's see how close we can get without triggering. Taking some cover here behind full cover. Hmm. Don't want to get too far away from the others. As you order, Commander. Might as well position ourselves here. I see everything. Covering now. Moving to Overwatch. Okay, everyone has full ammunition. Um So this here is double full cover. Moving in. And there are the reinforcements. The VIP is secure. We're on the move. VIP identity confirmed. Firebrand is setting up for evac. We've got multiple contacts closing on your position. Okay, so we got Push. hold your ground. We got two different locations where the enemy is going to come uh, to us. I think Andy here is still better off just being in cover and scouting for us. Do we have any option to remote start anything over here? I guess they're a remote startable thing. No. Probably would have been too, too good uh, to get um, a remote start. So that's an overwatch, an overwatch. I think we can overwatch with our sniper and our vip i'd like to just get him upstairs as far away as possible from both of those locations so we're looking at another officer and at the sectoid okay Nice one. Nice one. Very nice. The officer took a nice beating. Let's hit those guys.
All right, seven points of damage is not too bad. Well, that's pretty good. And we got more reinforcements coming in. Oh, wow. So... Let's think about that here for a second. We do have a flashbang. I guess we can still keep that for us, but let's cut hit all the way over here and take care of a lot of those guys could move to here kill this dude fifty fifty on the sectoid actually 60% shot, which would be a secure kill. That's a 100% kill. We could move to a flanking position and kill him 100% as well. Not quite kill the other um, soldier for 100%. So we can, we could get rid of all of them essentially by, yeah, really moving probably over here. Problem is, we're very deep into enemy territory at that point. And this is a nice withdrawal if needed. You do not have that if you're over here. 80% chance and not guaranteed, uh, we're not guaranteed a crit. Um, yeah, now a grenade would of course be perfect. Yeah, there is no um, play here that wouldn't involve some sort of a downside. I think to begin with, we definitely could move the sniper, not necessarily advised. We could use him as a backup to throw a flashbang grenade if needed. Let's first of all deal with the major threats. Could drop down here. There's a ladder right next to us. We're in a pretty safe position with the exception of uh, this guy being able to move over here and then flanking us. Um, yeah, that would be a bit of a bummer. Could position ourselves up here. Killing this guy. Um, and all of this here is not in line of sight, so they would probably need to go even further back. And that's too far for a shot. So I think this here is a safe position unless someone crawls up here. We can, of course, prevent the uh, crawling up here by just blocking the ladder. Which, by the way, is over here. So that's very unlikely to happen. So I guess this here is already a winner in my book. 100% chance. And just simply taking care of business. That's nice. Um, I would say let's position ourselves over here, rather over here. Let's find completely out of line of sight and not blocking the ladder. That's good. Now, next up, we could kill those two. We cannot charge all the way over there, which would be nice for slashing attack. If we're going in and uh, killing this guy, then that's pretty much a commitment to basically fight into uh, into that direction there is another pack coming in right next turn not the worst idea uh, to make short uh, pro uh, process with uh, him it's a 90 percent chance to kill him and we do have a flashbang as a backup plus we're not flanked we're standing here this guy will not even be able to reach us 
Am I right? Yes. I mean, he could. Nah, he couldn't double move over here and then uh, reach us. So, I think that's a somewhat safe bet. Uh, the question that I'm asking myself is: Are we going to take the 80% chance, or are we just going to go down and take care of business? The quote unquote safer route to kill this guy is to move to here and then deal with him. By the way, we still do have a shotgun. So one thing that we could do is we could just move to here and shotgun this guy would definitely kill him as well. Unfortunately, those positions, which are really, really good, are still giving him full cover. So that this guy, uh, the trooper, is always flanking us, which means I made up my mind. We could go to here, but it is essentially a commitment that we will fight over here, and the guys that are going to land will continue to move back here so that will probably give us a bit of a hard time and that's really the only spot where we're flanking him and having some cover I am on the move. yeah that's an 80% chance to kill him And we're not revealed, which is even better, so they don't know that we're here. I'm taking the safe route because I don't like 90% chances, which means it's shotgun to the face time. See you later, Advent Officer. And that's a 60% chance, which is as good as it gets for now. Good. Pretty solid first round of um, reinforcements. Luckily for us, low hit point reinforcements up here. They did start to spot us out now. And there is only one reinforcement coming in uh, this time. Okay, so this here would be a flanking maneuver. This here would also be a flanking maneuver and it's closer to the stairs up, which means it'll allow us to flee better. Let's kill this guy. Fortunately, we're short on ammunition. The magazine is just not big enough. That takes care of the one side. Sixty percent chance to hit uh, this guy. Can move over here into full cover. Yeah, we gotta reload soon. That's another 100% uh, kill, which is good. And unfortunately, it's again back to a 60% shot. Let's see if we can kill him. Nice. Okay, we will need to reload, so it's definitely not around where we can continue to kill, as we did before. There's another, P, uh, another set of reinforcements coming in. Oh, we still got one more... 
one more shot in uh, in us. If we were to move up here, that'll not be a flanking shot. But I feel going even further back, like into here, starts to make it incredibly difficult for us to sort of go back to the team. So am I going up here and taking a 50-50 chance with this guy? That's a good question. Need to reload, definitely. So this here is relatively straightforward. Yeah, I don't like it because it takes us so far away. But there is a, a, a set of letters up here, which kind of convinced me that that's the right decision. Reloading. And we're soon done with holding the position. This could, by the way, spiral out of control so easily. I mean, the fact that we do have high ground and that we, have, that we were prepared um, had pretty decent positioning overall. That's the only reason why this here is not a complete and utter slugfest. So we can get out of there. How about our Reaper? Could move up. Okay, okay. Could move down here, essentially kill this guy, and then there is still the ladder that allows us to get back up. Hmm. This is a weird zone to evac. It's near to the uh, it's near to the VIP, but I mean, for the others, it is really bad. Yeah, that's a backup plan. Yeah, there is no other way to flank him other than here. And I think that we're just barely capable of running upstairs. Problem is that this piece of stairs is also not very helpful. So this ladder here is really the way to go. Don't want to be caught out with these guys. On All right, let's finish this guy. Of course, we're missing a 90% shot. That's a bit of a bad omen. Missing a 90% slash. Exactly. Come on, guys. She's like, are you serious? Get your shit together for once. Moving to designated position. 
So that's the closest position to an exit, but still can hit him. And boy oh boy, am I not having it. That's some XCOM RNG right there. Almost uh, out of uh, the thick. And then everything starts to crumble. Alright, they're coming with four. And these are probably also four. So it goes without saying that now is the time to leave. We're taking Wrath. Alright, so that's an easy rush to the evac zone. Yeah, we had enough movement. Cool. Worked like a charm. And that, ladies and gentlemen, had been quite a close mission. I think we killed almost 20. Yeah, 21. Well, that is awesome. Having a flawless mission like that, wonderful. Hey, look at that. Everyone got a promotion. And it's even more astonishing that Wrath got another one. He's now already a lieutenant. Uh, given that we have a lot of extra AP, that is phenomenal. So we're going to take Silent Killer, meaning that whenever he kills someone, he stays in uh, concealment. That's awesome. Dead Eye isn't bad. It's quite the opposite. It's actually quite good for him because he wants to deal a lot of uh, damage. Um, plus, with the crit multiplier on top of it, Dead Eye is actually a really, really good ability for him. And then on top, um, I would say we're just giving him Needle and spending our points that way. Uh, two armor piercing uh, means uh, that in case we do have heavier armor units like mechs, he is still capable of dealing full damage. Mabazu uh, gets long watch and starts becoming a bit um, better sniper. Perez here gets Shredder, that's good. And Jessica Jones finally gets Blademaster, which will allow her to hit 100% of the time and kill all sorts of units. Look at that, we got a VIP, Minyong Jung, and a Codex Brain. Plus, uh, reduce the avatar, avatar progress again by two, which should be at zero at the moment. And we got 82 Intel, which is probably the most important thing after the engineer. Now that we do have an extra engineer, I want to let him work on the power relay just for four days so that these here will um, end at the exa uh, exact same time. Meaning once the excavation is done, it immediately um, allows us to, to build the um, shadow chamber. Um, alien encryption is coming in just in time, so everything works out well. Let's see if I fix the whole um, character pool issue. Probably not um, for this safe game. Yeah, we still got many rookies that have never been seen. So I guess you got to deal with uh, just a few here. Divert, uh, Sane, Rabbit and Mike the Public plus Quick Feet. Those are from the character pool. The rest is sort of new for this run, but it might be a refreshing change. Black Market. I think we're going to investigate that for various reasons. We need to have the opportunity of getting extra supplies if needed. And that's at the end of the second circle. I mean, we did a lot, so that was, I would consider it pretty successful. This here really doesn't matter, at least not for this run. And let's see, since we do have permanent dark events, this here matters a lot. Risk of ambush on all covert actions, doesn't matter. Stun lancers have a chance to move after performing a melee attack. That matters a lot. We don't want that to happen and whatever the hidden event is is probably bad as well. Oh, we got the extra uh, power. Well, that is good. Yeah, since we do have the extra power, we're going to take it. 
that'll allow us to definitely have enough to build up. We don't need the uh, resistance contacts yet. Yeah, the additional power that is helpful. It's already underway. Supplies are fine. Uh, we don't need them right away. I would rather go for the market. We can always catch the supplies later. They pile up month after month. And there's the first alien facility. Nothing to be concerned about from, from our side. We're most likely not going to see it through this run at all. The Avatar project now begins to start a bit more, and that's fine, that's normal. Uh, what could we buy? A lot of things for Intel. A scientist, which is great, but we don't want to waste Intel on it. Unfortunately, we can't sell things for Intel, but we can sell things for credits, and uh, getting a few out of it isn't bad. We're keeping the Illarium core. Just a couple of trooper corpses. Uh, what do we probably not need at all? Since we do have a lot of stocks, we can uh, advanced stocks, we can get rid of the normal stock. And that's it. We're okay on money. So, in terms of just everything that is happening here, if we were to empty that slot it'll bounce back to 18 days we don't want that so just a tiny bit more construction so that both of these are being done just at the same time we're still on alien encryption and the rest looks fine I'm not going to go for the supplies we're instead continuing with intel i mentioned that we will need to put all of the time that we can get into gathering intel Commander, we've just received intel that one of Dr. Yeah, we got a nice little um, alien ruler in that facility. Again, not a surprise. If we maybe get a facility um, uh, facility lead for free, uh, then it still costs intel to research it, but uh, that could be a thing. Uh, killing an alien ruler right away with a um, with a repeater could lead to a nice breakthrough. I think now we are at the point where this here is being done. Yeah, just a tiny bit beforehand. So efficient use of our engineers dictates that we want to start clearing out the alien machinery even further. In terms of proving ground, we're still on experimental ammunition. That's okay. Nothing to speed up there. Together, we have succeeded in our Got another engineer, which is fantastic. I wasn't even uh, aware that um, what the reward of it is plus mobility. Um, that will help us a lot. So we're okay on engineers. Let's take a look. Um, we could get mobility, increase income is irrelevant, um, Intel 40, what's well, not bad, and 10% increased learning. I think the Intel is the best that we could get out of this year. Hacking plus three. Um, we do ha have hardware at the back, but we want to take he, uh, her on the missions with us so we can't just put her onto th uh, that mission to be honest three hacking is not the end of the world we're just putting a couple of uh, rookies here and I'm not go even going to put scientists um, here for for potential reduction of wounding doesn't matter those rookies will just run the mission increase income now nah. we could locate the ad additional faction i guess that's an option My 
if we leave Shannon up here with the Covert Ops action minus 33%. That's good, but I think we will need her in the other areas. In terms of energy, we do have five available, which is exactly as much as we need for the Shadow Chamber. We will get more with a power relay. So that should be good to go. If we were to upgrade this here, It'll give us another resistance order. Nothing that is absolutely needed at this point, but we gotta keep it in mind shortly before the, the end of the month. So instead, we're going to put Shannon in here and starting to just clear out as much as we need. We're in mid of April. And that is our next target. So we're either going to go for 104 Intel, which I can already tell you that's what we're going to do because Intel is exactly what we need. Or we can work for a, corp um, a Corporal Ranger for a, a dark event that we don't even want to counter. So although neutralized Field Commander mm, it's not the, the best um, mission type, <clears throat> I want the 104 Intel. That'll bounce us up to 280. So we're nicely, nicely picking up with the Intel. And yeah, I think that is it for this uh, run. Let's take a look. Reaper is still tired. Um, our A team is definitely not available, but Hayward needs experience as well. Rabbit needs experience, so it's going to be Specialist Ranger, Grenadier, Pablo uh, still wants to earn his strides, and uh, Masabo, the sharpshooter from... Uh, oh no, we got our Templar. Hmm. Well, it's probably going to be Hayward, Rabbit, our Templar, and Pablo Perez, because we already got a sharpshooter. I doubt we're, we will need two. Um, and... A Templar could in, uh, come in incredibly handy if we're playing our cards right. So yeah, that's going to be the next mission. Um, the only thing that um, concerns me is we are now in the third iteration cycle. It's not always a month, um, but uh, we're like one and a half month in. So third iteration cycle, um, because those iteration cycles are like 28 days. And the biggest problem is uh, that the enemy uh, power level will have upgraded just once more. We're now fighting against Vipers, Stun Lancers will be more common, Mechs will walk around the place. And we still have the same crappy weapons um, as we had before. So, lots to think about, um, but that ends today's uh, episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you all in the next episode, guys. Take care, bye-bye.